Hello, my name is Matthew Hansel. I'm a transport researcher at the University of Technology, Sydney. In 2018, I presented a paper to the Australasian Transport Research Forum in Darwin titled Better Service Through Runtime Savings, an Inner West Light Rail Case Study. This video is a slightly updated version of that paper. The Northern Territory is an absolutely stunning place to visit, and if you have the opportunity, it is well worth your time. This section provides context on the Inner West Light Rail in Sydney, Australia. The Inner West Light Rail starts at the colonnade for the old tram system at Central Station before running down On Street through Capitol Square and Paddy's Market, stops until Darling Drive where it then enters the old goods line alignment for 20 additional stops before arriving at its stub terminal at Dulwich Hill. Its normal operations during um, peak time were every eight minutes with a 15 minute uh, headway off peak and it was an all stop service. The light rail was running to the Lilyfield terminus and after a community campaign it was considered whether it should extend to a Dulwich Hill terminus using the unused goods line. An environmental impact statement was preferred, pre prepared sorry, using the strategic travel model to determine whether or not the forecast would have sufficient patronage. With the no extension scenario in purple, there was an estimated patronage in 2016 of 4 million journeys per year, but with the extension forecast, the model predicted a 7 million per year patronage. When the system opened and was using the Opal cards, the patronage was observed for 2016 at being 9.9 .9 million and the 27 being 10.2 million. The strategic travel model used in Sydney significantly underestimates public transport patronage and overestimates road volumes. It has been four years since the original paper was published and this updated graph shows the average daily patronage on the vertical axis and the month of the year on the horizontal axis. Up until the start of 2020, there was still a significant patronage on the line well above the forecast level except for the January shutdowns. However, the start of the COVID-19 pandemic resulted in lockdowns in Sydney which saw patronage fall off and it has remained below the levels forecast um, ever since. This graph shows the number of journeys per hour taken on the Inner West Light Rail for a day of the week during a sunny March in 2016. This data is available because of the tap on tap off recording or total data set available from the Opal ticketing system. Uh, the weekday patronage shows the classic uh, two dual peak and uh, the weekend patronage is much greater than expected um, for Sydney with Sunday and Saturday still being quite high levels of patronage. There is also substantially other peaks of uh, travel on the line during the daytime, which uh, indicates that the service is being used for purposes other than commuting. Using the total data set from Opal, we were able to generate a heat map of where people are traveling from and to, and the amount of demand on that particular line. So the top heat map uh, starts at Dulwich Hill, then goes to Central, and then comes back out to Dulwich Hill and represents um, different segments between stops. So the horizontal axis of that is time, and it's broken down to minute. We can see on the top left of the graph there is a cluster of people heading inbound to Piermont Bay, who were then expected to walk across the bridge to the city for the shortest travel time, and um, on the bottom right we see another a heat area of people heading out of the city. There's an interesting flow of people heading to the star in the morning and back from the star which indicates uh, a significant amount of people heading to work. There is however an additional peak in the evening about 1548 which is a group of people heading to and from the star and we see that also in people heading out between 10 and 11 in the morning. Looking at the data for Star City and when people tapped on broken down per hour, 
we were able to see a very clear pattern. There is a surge of people heading to the star in the morning, tapping off between eight and nine. And we see a, a surge of people heading back after five o'clock. But we also see a significant portion of people heading out in the hours 11 to 12, where then there is a relative lull and another surge of people heading back to the city um, at 1500. Now, this is uh, in line with the Shenyang dance, which was at the Lyric Theatre. So this indicated that there was a significant event crowd at, um, at Star City because of the Lyric Theatre. With this big data, we were able to demonstrate the crowding on the service and proved to Transport for New South Wales the need to add additional services to cope with the matinee crowds. And this big data analysis resulted in an increase in uh, the services provided to people on this line during this period. From a customer's perspective, they just want to get from place A to place B, and that is considered their displacement. And if they turn up just as the tram arrives and they will get off as fast as they can possibly go, and thus the maximum displacement speed represents the absolute best the service is, is able to achieve. So that is a good way of asserting whether, uh, determining whether or not a service is running relatively straight and relatively um, well for the customers. Now what we can see is that Lilyfield to Fish Market, the average speed there is up to 19 kilometres an hour, whereas the fastest the light rail was displacing people between Lilyfield and Central during this period was 11.28 kilometres per hour, which is just over twice walking speed, which is not very fast indeed. The fact that the um, speed really significantly drops after you hit the on-street section shows how significantly the traffic lights impact the uh, running time. This is a beautiful photo of Litchfield National Park in the Northern Territory, and the next section describes the philosophical context of this paper. The surface quality loop is a framework used by UTS to describe the issues of differing perspectives to lay people when it comes to discussions about transport services. Now, there is a dichotomy here between what the customer perceives and what the service provider perceives. Specifically, the customer is seeking to solve their problems to be able to trust the system and the service provider is perceiving things in terms of their service targets which are about headways and timetables and stop location and networks. They are different worlds. Ideally what the service quality is targeted, the timetable, should be based on what the customers seek. Thereafter the provider has to will attempt to deliver those services and the customers will have a perception about the quality of the service based on the actual delivered services. One additional point from the service quality loop is that there are multiple beneficiaries of the transport system. For example, all of the big banks in Sydney CBD with their offices are benefiting from having their employees being able to get to work and not having to provide them parking or pay them extra for tolls. But the, those big banks are not paying any additional funds, they are simply beneficiaries. The other addition from that is that their service partners are essential to the operation of, this, of the system, such as the roads network is essential for the operation of buses, as well as the coordination of the traffic lights. Dr. Michelle Zybotch coined the Measure Stabilise Reduce framework during her work on dwell times for Sydney's heavy rail system. However, I realised this would also apply to the running times on the inner west light rail. Simply, you measure a particular quantity such as the running times or dwell times on the transport system and identify those cases where the system was unstable and unusually long, but not um, rare uh, run times occur. And then you try and work out how to eliminate those unusually long run times. For example, these might be caused by traffic lights. That is about stabilising the system, 
So then once the system is stabilized, you can focus on increasing capacity by reducing these key durations. Dr. Zybots describes the transport and land use system as being that which emerges from the urban environment. It starts with the physical infrastructure, such as the roads and railways, which are then operated using a particular set of targets and levels of service. This then leads to travel behavior from the system users and expectations about the future. That behavior leads to patterns of land use. And from those patterns of land use, you then get feedback to people uh, of requiring more infrastructure. The productivity of the system is based on how efficiently land and energy and resources is used within this transport and land use system. Now transport is multidisciplinary as was discussed above. The transport service partners include everybody such as the timetablers, those who do procurement, recruitment, contract management, those who design and build the rolling stock and those who do the marketing, all the way up to the minister. They are the ones who are essential to determining what the transport operations are and in the longer term what infrastructure is physically built. Now in order to reduce the end-to-end runtime in order to improve capacity, those people need to coordinate and collaborate in order to see better operations and more efficient and more productive systems. The University of Technology Sydney is a practice-based institution and our engineering students are expected to do a full year, one quarter load project which examines a particular topic. Now, the staff usually set the uh, scope of the project with some divergent thinking. For example, the UNOS light rail project that we conducted, we set the students a goal of finding out how to save four minutes of runtime, which would be enough to save an entire vehicle. Then the students, in this case, Mr. Samra, Mr. Melissanik, and Mr. Smalley, um, went off and analyzed three possible options of achieving that. They are focused on the how to do it, which is convergent thinking, whereas the planning of Dr. Zybots and myself focused on the divergent thinking of what to do. The reason we sought the reduction in running times for, by just four minutes is because the key equation for operating a transport fleet is the number of vehicles is equal to the return running time divided by the vehicle headway. If you can reduce the return running time, you can save the number of vehicles and save costs to the public, or you can reinvest that um, vehicle in reducing the headway. That key fleet equation is shown on this diagram here with the horizontal axis representing the return runtime, the vertical axis being the number of vehicles and each of the lines representing a different vehicle headway with the red headway with a cross being the 15 minutes. As can be shown on, seen on the graph, if you were to reduce your runtime from 18 minutes to 17 minutes, you could easily save a whole vehicle for a 15 minute headway. And that applies for all of the various headways. Note that the uh, shorter the headway, the faster the number of vehicles grows, as is clearly seen by the three minute headway. So in order to improve your services, you want to control your running times. Those fleet equations is why we set the students a task of saving as much time as they could on the running times. This photo is of the magnetic termite mines uh, in the Northern Territory on the way back from Litchfield. Here's an example of an abstract summary table from SEMRA's uh, lease cost planning analysis to determine which uh, alternatives should be examined by the students. The reduced well times, the alternative service patterns and the traffic signal priority were those which would have the most benefit for the least cost and were most likely to be implementable. Igor examined the dwell times on the service to determine if there could be improvements achieved that way. And he examined the CCTV of the trams from the inside and of the stations to determine which of the stops and which of the 
uh, behaviours with inside the tram were the most problematic. As can be seen from this video, people crowding around the door um, prevented people from getting on and from getting off, increasing the dwell times. At the time, the most problematic stop was, of course, the star, as it was the most populous. Now, in the uh, eastbound PM peak, it was possible to see dwell times there up to two minutes, well above the 30 second uh, that it was possible. And they were significantly slower than what they could otherwise be due to the already crowding on the service. Whereas the westbound PM peak um, was also quite bad with dwell times up to a minute. And again, those were more than they were um, in the best case scenario. Mr. Summer examined whether an alternative service pattern with short running would improve the um, peak loading of the tram and thus make it more reliable. I assisted him with doing the big data analytics by aggregating the numbers, which he then was able to assign to various services on the network. Using the aggregates from the total data, the baseline in orange was represented the peak loads of the various services. And the blue line represents a scenario in which there was the short running services only to Lilyfield as the yellow dots and the blue dots being the services going all the way to Dulwich Hill. The difference between the two lines represents whether or not there was increased or decreased crowding. Mr. Semra de determined that the short running services wouldn't be underutilized while the long running services would end up being overutilized. And thus he concluded that a short running service would not improve the run times. Meanwhile, Mr. Smalley looked at the traffic light priority for the light rail services, starting with an analysis using, again, the aggregated total data to determine what was the patronage on the system. Dowling Drive is where the tram crosses from the old goods line onto the Owen Street running. And at that intersection, there is a traffic light. The traffic light volumes in green were then mapped to the regular number of passengers per car and an estimate of approximately 600 people for the 8 a.m. hour was determined for the Darling Drive intersection. However, despite the tram being at the very end of its run and in a least popular section, the estimate for the light rail patronage through that intersection was 2,000 people per hour. Thus, it is reasonable to conclude, as with the other intersections, that the tram should have higher priority because it had the most number of people. Traffic lights operate in cycles made of phases. For the tram tramway, there were two phases, usually for cars, followed by an optional transit phase, which was only activated if a tram was detected, followed by two more phases for the cars. Mr. Semmer considered an alternative option where a single additional phase was added for optional tram phase or two additional tram phases were added to move the vehicles more efficiently. This box plot shows that the current system had a peak weight at the traffic lights for light rail vehicles for of up to eight minutes, whereas um, 50 percent of the weights were down at three minutes. Given unconditional priority, the SCAT simulator suggested that the tram would usually wait less than one minute, but due to weird flow-on effects could wait up to seven minutes. However, one, one additional transit phase could keep the run times for the tram waiting down to less than five minutes, but two additional transit phase could keep the 75% of the wait times less than two minutes, and most of them about three minutes or less. This would mean that this one change alone of improving the traffic light priority should be able to save the four minutes needed in order to reduce the operating needs of the service by one vehicle at a 15 minute vehicle headway. TransDev Australasia helped us significantly with our research and the students were all excellent and worked very hard. Dr. Zybots was very instrumental in the development of this program and has continued it with additional students. 
Thank you and have a good night.